When we talk about platformers on DOS, there's a few games that come to mind. Commander Keen, Duke Nukem 1 and Duke Nukem 2, the awesome Jazz Jackrabbit series, this, Alien Carnage, also known as Halloween Harry. Now you might be asking, well Brian, Halloween Harry is a DOS game, not a Linux game, what the hell are you doing? And really the answer is, Linux doesn't have any good Halloween games. And Halloween Harry or Alien Carnage isn't really a Halloween game, but it is a game that I spent a fair amount of time playing as a kid, and it does have the word Halloween in the name, so that's good enough for me. In the mid-90s, I spent a lot of my time sitting in front of a computer playing Apogee games, and a lot of those games were platformers. So it was only a matter of time before I came across Halloween Harry, and man did that game piss me off. See, when I was a kid and a young gamer, I had very little tolerance for bullshit. When I was about six or seven, my parents bought me a Super Nintendo. And the Super Nintendo was retired after a few months after I smashed all of the controllers. So in this video, I'm going to revisit Halloween Harry and give a somewhat biased review. So the copy of Halloween Harry that I have came prepackaged and configured with DOSBox. I could just as easily use my own DOS emulator, but instead I'm using Crossover with Wine, because I don't feel like setting up and configuring my own DOS emulator. All things considered, the title card looks pretty nice, right before it fades to black and sends you to the title. And then I've noticed the game does this weird flashing thing, especially at the title screen. Like, look at it. Why does it do this? The only thing that I can surmise is that while the game is still initializing, the developers didn't want the player just to sit at a black screen. So the initial screen you saw was just a picture, and then once the game was actually initialized, it would show you the actual title screen that you can interact with. Kinda lame if you ask me. But overall the title screen's pretty nice. You have this PDA looking thing called an Infoboy XL, and the buttons on the left are play, stop, pause, fast forward and rewind. And then on the right hand side you have what's clearly a floppy disk that says Mission Data Top Secret. This is something that peeves me about games that are supposed to be in the future. By 1994, CDs actually existed. So why the hell, in the mid-2000s, would we still be using floppy disks? It just baffles me. And Halloween Harry isn't the only game to display one of these. So you've got your basic options. Play game, resume game, game options, high scores, instructions, order info, and of course, exit to DOS. Order info will take you to the standard dark blue screen with light blue text and inform you that the game is only $19.95, which really isn't that bad of a price. I also like that it says for overseas orders, run the file dealers exe to find the nearest dealer vendor in your country. Why the hell did they make a separate application for overseas vendors? It's not like this application is going to connect to the internet or anything. So instructions includes the story, the control scheme, an awesome ASCII picture of the Gravis gamepad, the status bar, how to select your weapons and how to use your radar and things like that. I've never understood high scores. It's like they just throw in random names with random scores. And what do these people have? A score of 50, 40, 30, 20, and 10? What did you do? Just log in and kill an enemy and quit? Game options are kind of weird because the sound goes away. Presumably because you can change where the sound is coming from, whether it's your PC speaker, or sound blaster, or whatever. You can choose your difficulty when selecting a game. And like a lot of 90s platforms, you can change your mission or level set that you start on. Which is actually really convenient for this video. Everything is cool until you want to play Mission 4, which requires you to complete Mission 1, 2, and 3. What bullshit. So the first thing I noticed right out of the gate was how slow everything was. And how sluggish the movement was. Like, look at Harry as he takes off. Now, I don't remember how slow the game was when I played it when I was a kid, and it's entirely possible that we're just used to really fast-paced games today. But my god, luckily DOSBox allows you to increase the processor speed, and these old DOS games were usually limited by your processor speed to begin with, so I just increased the processor speed to make the game run better. Within minutes of playing the game, I was reminded why I hated it so much as a kid. To start with, the level design is abysmal, and I'll talk about that in a minute. But my biggest problem with this game is you can't tell what's in the foreground or the background. Everything looks like it's in the foreground. The only thing that actually looks like it's in the background is the actual background. Like here, Harry looks like he's in a warehouse of some kind. And it's like those big gray pipes. 
They kind of look like they're in the foreground, and some of them are, but some of them aren't. Like right there. Why couldn't I walk through that? Oh, but I guess that brown beam is in the foreground. But then I can walk through those two gray pipes. That's the problem. You can't tell what you can walk through and what you can't, and it drove me insane. Like right here. I didn't know I was getting stuck on that piece of the platform until I died. So another problem is how maze-like the damn levels are. I mean, some of the levels were designed like they were supposed to be mazes. Like look at this part with the sewer drains, and some of the sewer outlets just dump you into places with nowhere to go. Like were they trying to frustrate the players? Another problem is like right here, there seems to be some kind of spider on the ceiling, but it looks like part of the background. I couldn't figure out what the hell was hitting me. And then another thing is that some levels are completely nonsensical. Like take this office level. There's no stairs? Harry has to use his jetpack to get from point A to point B. And then the stupid jetpack takes your flamethrower ammo. So if you run out of ammo, you're fucked. You basically have no choice but to start the level over again. This is terrible level design. Another thing that in my opinion is completely indicative of bad level design is when you force the player to use some sort of radar or map to complete a level. Without the radar telling me where somebody is, I could never figure it out. If that radar didn't tell me where that person was, there's no way I'd be able to complete the level. And then the irony is that I couldn't complete the level anyways because there was still a captive remaining. This is the definition of bullshit. As far as the graphics go, I actually don't have much negative to say. I think some of the things that they did with the translucent foreground was cool. And as much as I hate the section with the sewer drains, I think that it's really innovative that you can see Harry through the holes in the pipes. In general, I think they did a really good job with the backgrounds, like on the warehouse level, and the sewer level, and even the office level. Even though the layout of the office level makes no sense at all, the graphics are actually quite good. I did notice a few things that were a little odd, like this part where Harry's flying in his jetpack but you can still see part of his head through this beam. And when Harry uses the little power-up vending machines, he looks like he's pissing on him. Look at the way his legs are spread. It's kinda weird. I think that the music and sound are pretty good. Like, listen to the music here. Here's the first mission. Here's the second mission. And here's the third mission. One thing I did find odd, though, is when you hit enemies with your flamethrower, it sounds like a machine gun is hitting them. Another oddity is that the jetpack doesn't make any noise at all. It has a little stream of smoke behind it, which is cool, but I would expect the jetpack to make some kind of noise. When Harry comes across these computers, which I think are checkpoints, a voice activated. speaks, a terminal is activated, or something like that, and the sound quality there is absolutely terrible. Terminal activated. But other than that, I'm pleased with the sound effects and music. So. To summarize Halloween Harry or Alien Carnage, I would say this. It's a pretty good mid-90s PC platformer, where you have a character that's very similar to Duke Nukem, gameplay that's very similar to Duke Nukem, with pretty good graphics, good music and sound effects, but abysmal level design. And of course, if you want to run this game on Linux, all you have to do is get your hands on the executable, and it'll run just fine inside of DOSBox or Wine. So that being said, I hope you like my review, and stay tuned for more.